Guys, I am so happy to bring you this Jimmy Neutron 15th anniversary reunion panel. Oh my god, guys, I loved the show growing up. I mean, I loved the movie, and these were my five favorite Jimmy Neutrons to watch as a kid. Uh, Ultra Sheen, where Jimmy transports uh, Sheen into his favorite Ultra Lord video game. I just like the video game-ness of it. Send in the clones, which introduces evil Jimmy, who ends up becoming one of Jimmy's most formidable foes. Out darn spotlight, which I don't know why I like this one. I don't know. I just like the half an hour episodes, and I thought it was kind of interesting what they did with the Macbeth episode. The end man, which come on, who did not like this episode? And of course, the Jimmy to me power hour. Uh, you know, I I was actually around the time the Jimmy to me power hour. I didn't have like cable at the time, which long story. But you know, when I found out about this crossover, it's like I gotta see this. I gotta see it. And when I finally saw it, I was like so weird when Timmy Turner turns into like uh you know goes into Jimmy Neutron's world, and then Jimmy goes into Timmy's world. It's like ah, uh, what a great end. What do we get? We get two more other. Half an uh, specials of those that's creating a trilogy and you know Butch Harmon has actually uploaded what could happen in the fourth Jimmy Timmy power and of course guys you know shout out to Mark DiCarlo who voiced the Hugh Neutron Jimmy's dad for moderating the panel the way he does and you know he just had the right energy and everything and you know guys they just do a lot of the voices guys they just did for to please us and of course yes they did address what happened with Planet Sheen and of course uh what else Ooh, oh yeah and if should the show come back? Like, should it come back? Because they really enjoy doing it. I would like to see Jimmy Neutron come back. And, of course, I actually asked it a question of the panel, like, addressing the, you know, what I've or heard that they were going to do a fourth season. If they did, the show was actually going to be much darker and more serious tone. It's like, was Nickelodeon going to let them do that? Anyway, guys, enjoy the show. It's the reunion of the cast of Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius! We're live streaming this, so we need a big round of applause as we introduce the characters you know and love, and the other ones. First, you know him as Sheen, it's Jeff Garcia! is Nick, but it's really a girl, Candy Milo! You know her as Milo Hooch, but we know her as Judy Neutron, it's Megan Kavanaugh! Every boy genius needs a girl, here she is, Cindy Vortex, Carolyn Lawrence! This guy's new to animation, so please make him feel welcome. Carl Weezer, it's Rob Paulson! <laughs> and now, the little boy that makes it happen, it's Debbie Derryberry, Jimmy Neutron! <laughs> and the tallest member of the cast, it's Mark DiCarlo, it's Hugh Neutron! This is the first time our cast has all been together to do an event uh, for Jimmy Neutron. It's the 15th anniversary of the show. Man, there's a lot of people here. That's fantastic. Thank you for coming. We only have a half an hour, so we want to get us to as many questions as we possibly can. First, I'm going to rip down this hero. I'd like to hear your favorite line that you did as your character. Jeff, you played Sheen. Just rip one off. I peed in the shower. No, I said it's your character, Jeff. Oh, yeah. Not that weekend in Vegas. <laughs> Nick. Uh, you want to hear me scream like a girl? <laughs> My lovely cartoon wife, Megan Cavanaugh, is Judy. How many times have I told you not to launch your friends off the roof? <laughs> Cindy Vortrex, Jimmy's love interest. Jimmy thinks he's the smart one, but actually it's me. <laughs> Robbie, Carl Weezer. Ow, my scapula! <laughs> Sorry, there's one better. Are you gonna finish that croissant? 
送。in the audience, do we have a question from someone? Yes, sir, in the Superman suit. What's your name? Calvin. Okay, I can hear you, but that microphone thingy right next to you, talk right into that so we can all hear. Dude, dude, dude talk into the microphone. There you go. So, I think it should be super quotes. Uh, what do you guys think that happened with Shin after Planet Shin? What happened? What happened to him after? Yeah. Uh, at the end, he found his way home, but we got canceled, so he's still up there. <laughs> I think that she ended up in prison. <laughs> Two syllables. Where's the other microphone for other questions? There's a microphone question right here. Does somebody have a question down front? Come on, come in front. Yes, come on down, talk into the microphone there. Oh, there she is. Come on to the microphone and ask a question. Hurry up, dude, we only got a half hour. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, okay, let's hear it. Hi, guys, it's a pleasure to meet you. Anyway, were any of you guys aware that if Jimmy Neutron had another season, it was actually going to be like much darker and more mature? And how do you guys feel like, will Nickelodeon let you guys go that dark if you guys did have another season? I wasn't aware of that. Well, they were going to do a whole movie where everyone died in a horrible fire. <laughs> Which, Which I think, that sounds hilarious, I think. But. <laughs> This whole, this whole cast has a dark heart, so it wouldn't... Yeah. We're okay. That stuff is easy. Yeah. Uh, so, someone asked me backstage um, about how we record the shows. Most cartoon shows, I don't know if you folks know this, you guys do, because you're very into this world. Uh, you'll, an actor will record with the director alone, and then they stitch together all the performances later. Uh, our our uh, producers, Steve Odenkirk and Paul Marshall, and our writers, uh, Jed Spingarn and um, Gene Grillo, Oh yeah, John Davis, our director, yeah. recorded us all together in one room at Nickelodeon, which allowed us to improvise with each other. So we could see each other in our own little locked off booths and make funny stuff up to make each other laugh. And we would call it the crazy pass. We would, we would record the script scene as is, and then Paul would say, all right, crazy pass. And then people would take out their notes that they had written the night before to make other people laugh and then just let them rip. And that, that was, the most fun part of the show. Right. That's where all the swearing comes in. Exactly. Yeah. And the sessions <laughs> took about an hour no. longer. Right, that would be the dark part of the show, I think. That's right. Uh, and I, I, Paul said about 30% of that actually ended up getting into the show. And I think that maybe that's one of the reasons that the show kind of appeals to kids, but also appeals to grown-ups because there was some yeah. live energy in there that... Uh, well, the scripts were really solid. I mean, the show, as in most really terrific animation, uh, the edict from the beginning was to not condescend, was to assume that everybody got the, the joke. And I mean, look and at Rob, the condescending is That's what right. people don't understand. Well, <laughs> I don't mean to be condescending. Oh, that means talk down to, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, which, you'll get this on the way home and you'll laugh. But look at the mean age of the folks that are coming to see us. This is not unusual. The fact is that that is a show that has really withstood the test of time. And I think it, it really speaks highly to Jed and, and John and Gene and all the folks that start with Jeff. Uh, yeah, because they knew what the hell they were doing. Because when we started, right? Yeah. You were eight, nine years old when Jimmy ne Neutron started. And you're still here and you're having babies. And wouldn't it be great if we came back? Yeah. Would you like to see Jimmy come back? Well, there's, a, there's a petition online. When we're done with this, we're signing over uh, far yeah, over the, there. Uh, autograph thing uh, over there. Over there uh, somewhere. And we have, uh, we have the, uh, the uh, address where you can sign the online petition. A lot of people have already signed it already. We would love to come back. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, we love your support, and we love that you're here. Next question. We yes, sir, the Yankee hat. Hey, hey, hold on. Well, hold on. we got to do this show again. That means you show up, Missy. Jesus, that means we have to get power. You don't have to, Jeff. <laughs> yes, Charlie Brown. Yes, sir. Coming out after 15 years. It's Thank you. The show is being pulled out of the recesses of my mind. 15 years. Ago. Wow, that boy. And, uh, 
now that it's been that long, where do you, if your characters were 15 years older, where do you think they might be, and maybe what's a voice they, they might have? I think I that think. Nick would be working at a video store, <laughs> really close to his mom's house. Yeah. Even though the store is out of business, <laughs> I'd be behind a wall in Mexico. <laughs> Divorced. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you would be living in Marina Del Rey having a really good time. Yeah. Stewardesses dig the hue because they make like pie. And Judy would be working for yes. NASA. <laughs> I think that Carl would probably say the following Hi, thank you for calling Petco where the pets go. May I help you? That would be it, pretty much. And Jimmy Neutron would probably have his own company in Silicon Valley and be the one calling Petco to say, Carl, please come work for me. And Cindy would be his competitor yeah. at the other company. But <laughs> even, even Carl knows that there's a difference between silicone and silicon. Okay? I'm just saying. What do those mean? Actually, I think if Judy and Hugh were divorced, Carl would be all over that Mrs. I Newton. Know. Great question. Next question. Come on forward. You, if you have a question, come down to the come microphone. Forward. We can't hear you back there. Walk this way, blue hair. Yeah, pass the microphone back to the guy with the blue hair. It's Rick or Marty, right? Yeah. yeah. Come on. Come on up front. Atta boy. There, there we go. go. He's going to skewer you with his hair. Woo! Hey. Uh, Jimmy, you know, you know, from the Rick, you know, we're from, from Rick's. Do you think you can beat us you know, to a science fair contest in you know, an entire galaxy? Depends on what galaxy you're in in the episode, <laughs> but absolutely, I'm afraid I will beat you because my time machine goes forward, saw what you did, went home, did it better. Come on down. Right, if you have a question, come and line up between walk one of these two walk microphones. In, walk Hi. In. Hi. 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 How are you? Well, Good. 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 thank you. What was your favorite part recording the show? Like favorite episode? Oh my goodness. There's how many did we do? Does anybody know? Were there like a I hump? think I, my favorite was any one I was in. Yeah. <laughs> um, that would be my favorite. Uh, I did other voices, but Nick was um, Nick was an odd character because it was the Jimmy Neutron show. And he was drawn so cute and so handsome that they were like, oh, we need to get him out because he's competing with the nerd. Yeah. <laughs> nerd bomb. Uh, you know what I think was cool, though, is that she would come in and do a line and just leave. And we were stuck there for like hours. <laughs> Honestly, it, it's, it was a, um, a, a, all of us have had the great good fortune of working on a number of shows. And honestly, uh, when you're working with people who are your personal friends yeah. and they just happen to be incredibly gifted and then you get paid, to hang out with people, to do something, don't tell anyone that we would be doing anyway, with people at this level. And the upshot, 15 years later, is this. Right, look right. at you guys. We're so lucky. Look at you. Yeah, it's a, it's a, we get how lucky we are, and it really is an awful lot of fun. You go home exhausted for four hours of, of just laughing your ass off. Yeah, we, we did a Christmas episode one oh, year. Yeah. And of course, they cast, they had to cast a Santa Claus for the Christmas episode. So who do they cast? Mel Brooks. They, if you Google Jewish comedian, Mel Brooks's picture comes up because he is a genius. So we were all informed before, do not, do not bug Mr. Brooks. Don't ask him, yeah. don't do anything. Just, just let him come in and do his work, whatever. No we funny. all showed up. 
Uh, Stephen Banks had a copy of The 2,000 Year Old Man. I had a giant poster from the producers. Everybody brought something. He could not have been more gracious, gracious yeah. and warm. And yeah. Megan had already starred in several of his live action movies. So Mel walks in and says, what does he say? I don't remember. Oh, Megan. He walks in and he sees Megan. He's like, oh my God, Megan, do you people not know who you have in your midst? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty. When Mel Brooks is kissing your butt, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, and I think his big line was, um, someone says, who are you? He goes, I'm Santa. Look at my sack. <laughs> my great big sack, I believe is what he said. Great big sack. And they told us, don't be asking for autographs. And we all showed up with stuff anyway. Well, she got to do that. We're fans, man. We yeah. totally get it. Yeah. Yeah. And he was very gracious. He signed it Thank you know, you. to us. Thank you for asking. Great sweetie. question. Thank you. Next question. Yes, ma'am. You have one. Here's one. Come on. Go ahead. Yes. Oh, go ahead. Your turn. Yeah, you guys are all amazing voice actors. Thank you. Um, if you could have one of the other characters you voiced come into Jimmy Neutron, who would it be? I think mine would be Carl. <laughs> <laughs> I like the to cut in your chin, Jeff. <laughs> See how mine's all whiny and stringy? Who was this? You mean another one of the characters that we're known for to show up? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, I think yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. I think maybe Dexter would be pretty good as yeah. uh, a rival for genius. I think that maybe Draculaura should be in Jimmy Neutron from Monster High. What about Pip the Mouse from Barnier? Well, I, know, I was thinking about I actually was Yeah, what would it sound world. like if Pip showed up on the show? <laughs> Hello, I'm the mouse. <laughs> Shoot a Sandy show up from the... Yeah, it's a pretty heavy duty cast, folks. Good this question. was super fun. Good question. Good question. Yeah. Next. Hi. He's right up the mic. Uh, hi. So I was wondering, uh, what was one of your most favorite improv moments? And also, could you do uh, the one voice line when you talk about sitting on a banana when you were seven years old? <laughs> what did you do? So when you talked about sitting on a banana when you were seven years old, could you do that voice? I said one? sitting on... That was probably one of the improvised yeah. moments I said. <laughs> sitting on a banana when you were seven sitting. years Wait, old? Wait, that made sitting. it into the final recording? That's, that sounds like something I would have made up. It sounds like you. Yeah, it does. <laughs> um, I think my favorite improvised moment, I think, uh, you know, Hugh would always call yeah, Judy Sugar Booger. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I made that up at I some point. Made it up. Uh, and, and God love them, but the, typically when you work on a show, the writers and the directors, if it's not on the page, they're very protective and they won't let people make stuff up because I think it hurts their ego or something, but our guys are so good, yeah. we're so good, that they didn't care, they just wanted to make a funny show. And when you have clever, brilliant improvisers and actors like the people that are sitting at this table, you'd be crazy not to turn them loose. Well, I, I, I never understood that, because they're going to get credit for it anyway. Yeah, but it made the show funnier. Yeah, it, it really does. It, just as Mark said, the, um, uh, the shows on which we've worked um, that have continued to be successful are virtually always hugely collaborative. Yeah. It, it really is about the show, and, and, and egos kind of get put aside. And it's also, it's, there's a fundamental difference, I think, with respect to shows like this and other celebrities. We, the characters are famous. We don't draw them, we don't write them. We are, provide the voices and to be sure, that is what really affects people in their hearts and their souls and we're grateful for that. But none of this happens without a shit ton of people working on it. That's true. So we get how lucky we are. That's true. The original uh, name of the show is Johnny Quasar. And yeah. they, they couldn't get the name Quasar because it's a, you know, brand. It's a, a brand. And um, so when we were doing uh, improv for the, when it was Quasar, um, we were, you know how moms always call kids by their full name? Yes. When they're, right, so it was James Isaac Quasar, and I came up with Isaac because Isaac Newton, and then it became Neutron. Which, Is that right? Yeah. What a cool thing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Good for you. Yeah, you are Megan Cavanaugh for the entire show. <laughs> Girl power. Um, and, and, and you know what's funny too is that Sheen was originally supposed to be an Asian character. Yes. And, and they, he they, wasn't? You, and you they, came and they, in and blew him away. Yeah. yeah. No, they found out I wasn't that smart. 
So they changed him to a little Mexican. <laughs> I remember in the uh, movie where Jimmy's flying over the, with his diamond with, to turn the coal to turn into a diamond to give to his mom to bribe her. And there was this country song called, I'm just an old chunk of coal. And it came to my mind and I started singing it. And the director was like, where'd you get that song? And I'm like, oh, Nashville. So they called the writer and he got in the movie. Thank you, John Anderson. These things just happen. Well, and you know, when we did the movie, the first, I was not supposed to play Cindy. They told me up front, they were very clear, you will never have this job. You are doing something called a scratch while we look for the actress who will play this character. So don't get your hopes up. You so will never, good ever, 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 ever play her. Here we are, 15 ego. years Here's later. Yeah. <laughs> who met? Yeah. I think my, my favorite improvised line was something that uh, <laughs> Robbie said. I don't even know if it ever made it to the show about the... Yeah, I said out of the blue, I just felt compelled to say, you know what? Jesus helps me trick people. <laughs> he does. That is my favorite. <laughs> I remember that 15 years later. Dude, how I remember the day you said that. I was drinking yeah. water all over the microphone. I it's, just remember thinking. It's no disrespect to you. Honestly, but people don't know this. Sometimes Jesus will sit with me and will call up a Best Buy and say, is your refrigerator running? Well, you better catch it! And then we hang up the <laughs> <laughs> just do it. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> hey, Mark. <laughs> right, right, right. Enough takes. Yes. <laughs> At some point, we had just stop. But my favorite thing was when we did our crazy pass, oh. you would just kind of sit back and wait for Jeff. Yeah. And then you would just, this show, went so far to the left that you were like, Didn't oh happen. my God. I mean, it, Jeff's, uh, Jeff's improvisation between Rob and just making Carl simpler and simpler and simpler, <laughs> and then Jeff just taking it rapid fire in a completely other direction. I was oh, like, let's let it go, mama. He says, he says, Jesus has me trick people. And you know Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's about, it's about the whole cast. Like, yeah. each one of us individually can do our lines, but when you get all these people together, another camaraderie happens, and it's so much fun, and yeah. it just comes to life, that's what makes a really great show. And yes. it just, it was the luck of the draw and the brilliance of the casting, and, you know, it was nice of them to let you in, Mark, really. Yes. Yeah. really. I was a diversity hire. They're dying uh, after their slides. <laughs> Let no, me have another. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Is that Sonic? Go ahead. Closer to the mic. Okay. Why would Jimmy and his friend go out of space with no space helmet? It doesn't make sense. Oh, that's called dramatic license. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's called it's a freaking cartoon. We can do what we want. <laughs> and why would they go into space anyway? I mean, wh why does a mouse talk at Disneyland? Why does a man fly? Where are these questions? Why is your hair blue, lady? That's why. <laughs> it just doesn't matter. We have another question. Well, we yes. have two. He's been waiting. Yes. Hi, oh, Sean. Go it's ahead. Two, right here. two questions. Is it possible for a Jimmy... Hold up. Is it, is it possible for a Jimmy Neutron reboot to come out? Jimmy Neutron what? A Jimmy, Jimmy Neutron reboot. 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 If, if the audience wants a reboot, there will be a reboot. Do you want a reboot? Petition, sign the petition. I, you know, we would certainly love uh, for that to happen with your support. Uh, hopefully, it will. Yes, you have a second question. Take a quick selfie with you guys. Oh, oh yeah. And look, we are still alive. Yeah. We have yeah. only seven more minutes. There we go. This time, he's got a question here. Oh yeah, question right here. Yes, sir, down front. Okay, guys. Between battle of the brains, who would win, Jimmy Neutron or Dexter? Oh. Oh. Let's find out. Wait a minute. I do have a nemesis in my sister, Dee Dee. So that they slow me down, but I think I could knock the crap out of Jimmy Neutron. Wait, wait, wait a minute. The Dexter from Showtime or the Dexter from Showtime? <laughs> Go ahead, Jimmy. Jimmy, what do you say? Well, I always play fair, so if Dexter was really better, then he would win. But, uh, 
that wouldn't happen, but I'm just saying I would be a grade school loser if that were to happen, though it would not. But what would happen, Mr. Jimmy, if we teamed up? We could rule the galaxies. Now you're talking, Dexter. Oh, uh, uh, did I come? No. Yeah, there are too many there. people in this house right now. <laughs> yes. We have one more? Come to the mic. Oh, one more Richard. question, I think. Come oh, on, tell right, this lady right Step down away from the mic. Hi. Come into the mic. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I have a question for Hugh. Yes? Can you please sing the song Donut Boy? <laughs> Yes, I can, but I'm going to do new lyrics that you probably haven't heard. Because I can't remember. How did it go? Who's that wicked cop that always get the back guys? Don't a boy. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Good Here. for you. you. You sing it with me. Wow. Right yeah. Wow. 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 Who's that crooked cop that always get the back guys? Don't a boy. Don't a boy. Who's got a smart son with a big giant your head? Come on, boy! Come on, boy! Yeah! Oh, that was a good one. Yes, question right here. Different than doing it, you know, in a studio uh, by yourself. Oh, it's hugely yeah. different. Uh, yeah. I think that uh, one of our producers, Paul Marshall, uh, and Steve Odenkirk were the kind of genesis behind the TV. There's Paul right there. Get out. You're done. Get out. Paul, sit here. There's a chair right here. People are interested in what you have to say, Paul. Here, just sit down. There you go. Got 30 seconds. No, this is important. Paul, Paul and I are actually producing a feature cartoon right now, and that was one of the stipulations that we had, because yeah. what do you get when you get a bunch of people as opposed to reading one-on-one? Well, well, I came up with a crazy pass. That's the big one? That's right. Yeah, I came up. Why? Why is it important? Improvisation, my friend. Improvisation. Do you know anything about improvisation? Clearly you don't, Paul. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's called sentence structure, you son of a... <laughs> no, this is... <laughs> this is the guy that I've had a... Uh, you neutron, because when Paul gets going, he doesn't finish. He won't finish a sentence when he's talking. Isn't that true, Paul? You patterned Q neutron off me. See, there you go. <laughs> it uh, is absolute misery if you're an engineer and you have to do a session like that because you have to get the buttons up on all the actors or leave it all open. Then the animators go crazy. So it's super easy for us when all the mics are open at once. Super hard on the other team, so you know, kudos to our animation team for making that work. Well, but you know what? Really good shows. Uh, that's what they do. They go the extra mile. You may may know this or not, but Robbie was also on a, sh a little show that no one really heard about called Animaniacs. And I believe you record the same way, right? We don't. Are you sure? Yes. 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 We don't have time to do it? No. Yeah, we're done. Oh. Yeah, we're done? Oh, okay. Mila said we're done. Right. Come on, Mila, we have a sign over in the corner. We are out of time. Thank you. We want to thank you. Before we leave, though, we'd love to see everyone jumping up and saying, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy! Jimmy, Jimmy! Thanks, you guys. We'll be over here signing stuff, and we'll see you later. Thank you. Thanks for a great 15 years, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye, you guys. Bye, you guys.